Hey everybody, Tim Albrook here and welcome to this week's episode of a brand new segment on the YFP podcast called the RX Money Roundup, where we give you our take on relevant financial news and updates, answer your questions and break down examples of financial planning in action. Today, Tim Baker and I will be giving you our thoughts on a recent article that was published in the USA Today titled, Do We Really Need $1 Million in Retirement Savings? Not Even Close, One Top Economist Says. But before we get into that discussion, let me give a shout out to our financial planning and tax professionals at YFP that make this segment possible. At YFP, we support pharmacists at every stage of their careers to take control of their finances, reach their financial goals, and build wealth through comprehensive fee-only financial planning and tax planning. You can learn more and book a free discovery call by visiting yourfinancialpharmacist.com. All right, let's jump into our discussion on the article of do we really need $1 million in retirement savings? This was an article published by USA Today. We'll link to that article in the show notes. And let me kick us off with a quote from that article where they say, quote, one prominent economist says you can retire for a lot less, $50,000 to $100,000 in total savings. He points to the experiences of actual retirees as evidence. The economist being referenced here is Andrew Biggs. He's a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute think tank. And he's really challenging the perception of what we think we need to have saved for retirement, or perhaps what we're traditionally advised for what we need and what the actual numbers support. Now, the argument that he outlines in the article is he's pulling from the Federal Survey of Household Economics and Decision-Making, where a vast majority of retirees or those at retirement age responded that they were living comfortably or doing okay, about 85%, but only had about fifty dollars to $100,000 in savings on average. Now, we would look at that and say, hey, probably not enough, but he's attributing that one of the main reasons that might be enough and not needing the larger amounts that we think we might need relates to social security benefits. So Tim Baker, this really begs the question of how much is enough when it comes to retirement planning, a topic that we've talked about at length on the podcast. So would love to hear your thoughts on this article that is a lot lower than numbers we're typically projecting. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, the, the, the economist that's, you know, that, that wrote the article is, it definitely has some contrarian views, right? So I think he mm-hmm. earlier um, in the year or last year kind of argued, you know, for eliminating the 401k plans, right? So that would essentially leave you <clears throat> to a retiree to to live off of, <clears throat> you know, uh, a pension and social security. And one of the things he cites in in the article or in in his yeah in his article is. Uh, you know, pensions are a thing, which, you know, we've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of people. And it's a very, very small, yeah. very small percentage of people that actually have pensions these days when 401ks, Tim, were adopted or made legal in the late seventies and really kind of became um, adopted in the eighties and nineties. Pensions have really kind of fallen by the way of the dinosaur. They're extinct. They're, they're not really mm-hmm. a benefit that we see. And I think the the big reason for that is, they're expensive, you know, they're, they're expensive for employers to maintain and the arrival of 401ks were really, which were really meant to supplement the, the pension and the retirement system that we had actually replaced it. And that, that shift really from the employer kind of providing for the retirement of the, of the worker to the actual employee, you know, kind of fending for their own retirement has had monumental um, uh, effect on our, on, on the way that we can, mm-hmm. um, you know, we approach retirement. It's funny because as I was, I talked about this article in, in the newsletter, we send out to clients last month in June. And as we were, um, preparing for our newsletter for July, the same, the same outlet that covered Biggs's article USA today also, you know, has a few stories about, why retirement is out of reach, um, why it's a, lu- why it's a luxury uh-huh. and kind of details people that it's almost the inverse where in, in, in uh, Biggs is saying that, you know, only 15% were, were struggling. The, the USA Today article was saying that only 10% are fine. Right. Right. So it, from a, from a, a reader perspective, 
it's super confusing. So I suspect that the, the, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Um, but I would say for our audience, Tim, um, pharmacists, you know, typically earning six figures of income, which is way above the, the average salary. Um, I would, I would say that it, it you know, you, you're going to need in, in, you know, you're going to be need to be a seven figure pharmacist to kind of yeah. plug the book a little bit. Right. So, you know, the, the, one of the things that I, I talked about is that the, you know, the average U S annual salary in, in Q4 of 2023 is was 59,384 from a household perspective. So, you know, think of, think of two, two salaries or, you know, whatever that looks like it was 74,580. Yeah. So he's looking at that data and saying like, you don't need a million dollars. If you're living off of, you know, 60 grand or 75 grand, you know, you can get by with a lot less. And I think his, his supported reasons of like pensions. And he also says like, Oh, like as you get older, your spending slows and insurance covers that, which I completely disagree with. I mean, we kind of talk about a spending mm -hmm. smile in retirement and we know that insurance is covering less and less. Social security is being taxed more and more. Um, you know, I think that the assertion is, is incorrect, but I would say like, if you, if you overlay the average American, so that's making 60,000, 75,000 as a household, I would agree that you don't need to be a seven figure. You don't need to be a millionaire to retire. It's, it's, it's certainly a lot more than what I think he, you know, he's like, Oh, 50 or a hundred thousand. Like, no, like that's not gonna, you know, that that's not gonna last, but it's probably not quite a million dollars. If you look at, you know, ours, where if you look at household income for clients that, you know, it's two, three, four, six X more than that 75,000. And if you're used to kind of living off of that income, then yes, yeah, certainly your needs are going to be a lot more. And that's where I think you, you know, start to get into where you're going to need a million or multi-millions. And again, depending on your thoughts on social security and where that's going to be in the future, yeah. I'm still bullish on social security in terms of it's going to be there, but we're definitely going to see changes to that system where they push the retirement age, mm -hmm. the full retirement age back, where they, they whether they, um, limit the benefit in terms of the monthly, the monthly amount, um, or that they tax it more. There's definitely going to be changes to kind of continue to buoy that system, um, as more and more baby boomers or, you know, retire and start to collect. So, um, there's lots of pieces here, but I, I do think I'm not going to say clickbait. It's not clickbait. <laughs> I think it's, it's a, it's an alternative view. Um, but I think most advisors, you know, he said, oh, you know, advisors are doing this to kind of drum up business. You know, most advisors are typically going to be working with people um, that have significant incomes and significant, unfortunately, you know, that's kind of, you know, that's the way it works in, in significant assets, you know, so they're not necessarily going to be working. So, so I think, again, that, that notion is a little bit misplaced, you know, um, in terms of what Biggs is saying, but um, I suspect that the truth kind of, you know, lies somewhere, you know, in, 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 in that spectrum of where you need to be. Yeah. I think your point, Tim is a really good one. It's a, it's an alternative, you know, viewpoint. I, I think articles like this or the opposite, right. That you mentioned, uh, are, are really good to just get us thinking, but not a whole lot more than that. Right. I mean, I think the danger in some of these things is we look at those and, you know, then we look at our retirement portfolio. Some of our listeners are like, Oh, I've got a couple hundred thousand dollars. So I'm good. Well, maybe, maybe not. Right. So like we've got to actually do the math and what, what is unique to your individual scenario of which an article like this or any other article cannot address in any way, shape or form. And, you know, I think the big limitation I see with this is making a conclusion that because people say they feel okay, that that actually means the numbers are okay. Those are two different things, right? And yeah. I think that's a jump, that's a jump of an argument, but I do think it, it, the alternative viewpoint is interesting. And I, I think it does also beg the question, is there a scenario where you save too much? Something we've talked about before uh, at the expense of today. Yes, that can happen. Now, I would argue just like you argued for many of our listeners, you know, less than 1 million, probably based on all the calculations we've run with clients and others, like ain't, ain't going to cut it. It's probably going to be North of that. But you know, for some people, they might think they need four five or six. When actually we dig into the numbers, it supports that number could be less and, and they might be able to take their foot off the gas a little bit. 
Yeah, and, and we're making assumptions too, Tim. Like, let's not pretend that we're not. Like, I'm assuming, like, if someone says, like, hey, Tim, can I retire? That, that's, that is the prototypical, it depends, right? So I think the question should be asked, can I retire living at a similar standard standard right. of living than I'm living now? Because, like, can you retire, you know, can you retire on half a million dollars of your, yeah, sure. But that means, you know, it's, it's the, it's the conversation I have with my wife, not to call her out. She's like, man, I, I want to stay home with my baby. We just had a baby in March. I want to stay home with my babies. And, um, you know, can we, can I, can you just, you know, earn more money or, or earn what you make and, and I can stay home. And I'm like, yeah, we can do that, but we just have to make lifestyle changes that she's unwilling to make. You know, like we, we maybe we downsize the house. Maybe we, you know, do some different things. And it's the same thing for retirement. Yeah, you can, you know, you can, you can retire and live on a lot less, but most people are not willing to do that. So when, when, when we say, you know, and when the question is asked, like, can I retire? We're assuming that you're retiring at a similar right. standard of living because most people don't want to take a step back. Like they, yep. and again, like the whole, you know, the, the question, you know, that, that, that people are asking about this article is like, so why, why don't, like, if, if it's true that, and this is a, a stat that's that's quoted a lot, which is very alarming. Is you know forty percent of Americans cannot handle a four hundred dollar emergency. Emergency, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's significant. And so, why are why are only why are only fifteen people, according to Biggs, saying that they're struggling? And I think a lot of it is like pride. You know, a lot of people are not going to be like you know there are people that are like that, but they're like, man, I'm really struggling. And I think this is one of the things with the, that that that's true for pharmacists. And I say this, you know, pharmacists are very goal oriented. They're very educated, you know, doctors. It's not comfortable mm -hmm. to sit in front of someone and say, like, I have no idea what I'm doing with my money, whether yeah. they're just starting out or they're a 60 year old pharmacist that is right. looking to retire and, and trying to put the pieces together. So. I do def I, I definitely think that that is part of the calculus here that most people are like, I'm okay. And, and it may be okay. It's like, I'm not in hundreds of thousands of dollars of credit card debt, or I'm not being evicted from where I live. But I think that plays a, a part. And, and again, like, I think, I think this type of article is good to have some, because, you know, to, to the point I was talking about with USA Today, you know, there's, multiple argu articles just that they that they put out alone that, that talk about um you know retirement being a luxury but then the next article is about you know social security and you know the fed released this morning that you know inflation is cooling he's expected it to be 3.3 percent it's three yeah. percent which now is you know kind of causing people to talk about are they going to cut the rate in mm -hmm. september and I think we probably need to see another month in, you know, July and August where it's kind of heading that trajectory. But that has, that has, you know, rippling effects to other parts. So, the, you know, the next thing that dropped after that was, well, Social Security, which was supposed to get a 3.3% increase yeah. next year, that forecast or that forecast, I think has dropped below three. I think it's like 2.7. So you're happy that interest rates are coming down. But if you're, if you're on a fixed income living on social security, you're like 2.7%, like that's like 60 bucks per month on an average, mm -hmm. you know, social security check. That's not cutting it, especially when you're seeing, and what they use, what's called like the CPIW, which is kind of the consumer price index for like urban workers, but that's not taking into account like the price of like food that's still up 10% or gas that's still up yeah. four or 5%. So I think it is misplaced and again, and I don't want to say it's irresponsible to say broad strokes. You don't need a you know, you don't need a million dollars because I think it does. I think for the, the average person, maybe they're like, oh, all right, you know, YOLO, let me just spend whatever. And then we believe in that a little bit YOLO. Like we want you to, you know, live a wealthy life today and tomorrow, but it's just every, you know, and this is kind of the, it, it depends. Like it really depends on your situation. It depends mm -hmm. on what your, what your view of retirement is you know, what you're currently living on, what you think that you want to live on in retirement, how long you think your retirement will last, which is that's probably the hardest thing to kind of, you know, forecast. But it's interesting. Like I, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not hating. I just wholeheartedly disagree, especially with the kind of 
um, audience that we have and the, and the incomes that pharmac pharmacists make. Tim, great stuff. Again, very thought provoking. And we're, we're excited to continue more of this on this new segment going forward on the podcast. And if you have a topic that you would like us to cover, a question that you want us to answer, you can send us an email, info at yourfinancialpharmacist.com, or you can also send us a voice memo by visiting yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash ask. As we wrap up this segment of the RX Money Roundup podcast, an important reminder that the content provided here is for informational purposes only, not intended to provide and should not be relied on for investment or any other advice. Information on the podcast and our corresponding material should not be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any investment or related financial products. For more information on this, you can visit yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash disclaimer. Thanks so much for listening, for your support of the podcast. We'll catch you again next week. Take care.